As we are describing our distributions, we're going to use one of three measures of central tendency. The mean, the median, or the mode. Let's talk about the mode. The mode is the most frequently occurring score in the distribution. When looking at the distribution in the form of a histogram, you can recognize the mode as the highest peak in the distribution. Typically, we will have unimodal distributions. These are distributions that have only one major peak, such as with a normal distribution or a bell-shaped curve. However, there are times when we will discover bimodal distributions. Those are distributions that have two major peaks, and we can see them clearly delineated in our histogram. We also have an option for multimodal distributions, which would be three or more most frequently occurring scores. However, when we encounter three, four, five, we don't call them trimodal, quadrimodal, etc. We just call them multimodal. And when you have multimodal data, you usually have something wrong in your data set. You're going to need to look at what's happening because your data are probably a mess. Let's talk about that bimodality, however. You may ask yourself, what would cause a distribution to have more than one mode? And you may tell yourself, there are two reasons why that could occur. It could occur naturally, or it could occur because we have overlapping distributions. Let's take a look at both of these examples. The first reason why we might have a bimodal distribution is because there really are two most frequently occurring scores. I want you to imagine that we're getting away to the lake house and we are going to go fishing. When is the best time for us to fish? When are we going to catch the most fish? If we get up early in the morning, just as the sun is beginning to appear, and we get out on the lake, the water is smooth as glass, and that is a perfect time to go fishing. You will catch a lot of fish first thing in the morning. However, there's another very good time to go fishing, and that is in the evening. As the sun is going down, as we're approaching dusk, that's an excellent time to be out on the lake trying to catch fish because we'll catch more then. However, in the middle of the day, when the sun is high and it's hot, that's a terrible time to be fishing. Let's go back and sit on the porch, enjoy a beverage, and wait for dusk, because there are two best times to catch fish, dawn and dusk. This is a bimodal distribution. Another time that we might have a bimodal distribution is when we have overlapping distributions. So imagine that we have collected a set of scores about college students, and we're examining our data using descriptive statistics. We plot our data, and we discover that there is a bimodal distribution, two most frequently occurring scores. One thing that we might want to consider is whether there is a difference in these underlying distributions. For instance, if we separate our data based on College A and University B, we might find that there are two distributions, not one. The average for the college might be different than the average for the university. And so we would probably want to consider our distributions separately. Anytime we encounter a bimodal distribution, it's important that we take a look at our data and do our best to figure out why it is occurring. Regardless of the cause, bimodal distributions can cause problems with an analysis. So it is important that we know whether we should just cope with those problems being caused because this is a naturally occurring bimodal distribution, or whether we should separate our data set and consider those two distributions separately. How then do we calculate the mode? Let's take a look at this data set. What is the most frequently occurring score in these data? We can easily see that the mode is four because there are more fours in this data set than any other number. Now consider data set B. What is the mode for this data set? This 
is a bimodal distribution. We have one mode at 5 and a second mode at 9. When we are calculating a mode by hand, as I did in this example, it's important to put the numbers in ascending order. However, when we use statistical software to calculate the mode, putting the data in ascending order will not be necessary. When would we choose to use the mode as our measure of central tendency? The mode is useful when our data are at the nominal level because it is simply telling us what is the most frequently occurring score, such as what is the most popular dog toy among the dogs that we have analyzed. The mode is also useful when we have bimodal scale data in order to report the true distribution as it exists. Returning to our example about fishing, the average best time to go fishing is at noon. If we see the bimodal distribution, however, we know that there are two best times and they're definitely not at noon. Another time to choose the mode is when we have outliers in a data set because the mode is not susceptible to outliers at all. No matter how many or how extreme they are, outliers will never affect the mode. The mode is also a quick and easy measure. It can be accomplished very readily and can be done with statistical software. However, the mode is not a good measure to choose if the behavior that we are interested in is zero. If I ask a classroom of students, how many cigars have you smoked in the last month? The typical answer is going to be zero. I'm probably interested in the small number of students who would answer two, three, six, ten cigars in the last month. But those numbers are going to be obscured by the mode, which tells me that the most frequently occurring score is zero. And so in that case, I would want to choose a different measure of central tendency, such as the median or the mean.